Hello there and uh, welcome back to my new video. In this video we are going to create a, a custom animated uh, UI component with a Jetpack Compose. So before we start uh, working uh, on this uh, custom UI component, let me first uh, show you what uh, will be the end result. So here we have the same component, only the first one does not contain this uh, subtitle text and this uh, second one does. So now let's just select one of those items. And as you can see, we will be able to apply those animations. However, when we deselect this uh, item, then that animation will not be triggered. So only if we select this item, uh, then that animation uh, will be triggered. Okay? And uh, as you can see, it looks amazing. Also, if you want to learn how to develop uh, modern uh, Android applications with a Jetpack Compose, then uh, be sure to check out my uh, website. So uh, the first thing, uh, we are going to create here a new uh, Kotlin file. So let's name this uh, Kotlin file a uh, selectable item and let's create the first uh, composable function with that uh, same name. So uh, this composable function uh, will have uh, multiple parameters and before we continue creating our item, uh, let's uh, add uh, all those parameters uh, which uh, we are going to need for our custom component. So the first one uh, will be a modifier of course, so Android X Compose UI. Its default value uh, will be a modifier. Uh, next uh, I'm going to add the one uh, selected uh, uh, variable of a boolean type. Uh, next I'm going to add a title of a string type. Uh, next uh, we're going to have a title uh, color of a type of a color as well. So uh, Android X Compose UI graphics. And uh, here I'm going to add a default value for our title color, okay? So here I'm going to say, um, so if our component uh, is selected, uh, then I'm going to apply here uh, one uh, color, so material theme, colors, uh, primary. And if this uh, selected variable is actually false, well, in that case, I want to apply here a different color. So again, I'm going to choose material theme object, and I'm going to choose here a surface color or a on surface color, okay? So on surface, and I'm going to uh, change its alpha state, to be 0.2 maybe, okay? So basically 20% opacity of this uh, on-surface color. All right, uh, the next parameter here uh, will be a title size, and the type here should be a text unit. Its uh, default value will also be uh, received from our material theme object, so uh, h6.font size, okay. Uh, next we have a title uh, weight of a type of a font weight, and here I'm going to add a default value of a font uh, weight dot uh, medium. There we go. Uh, next uh, we're going to have um, a subtitle. So a subtitle will actually be an optional value, okay? So you can create this uh, selectable component without this uh, subtitle. And that's why I'm going to set here a nullable type for this uh, parameter. And its default value will be null. Uh, next I'm going to add here a subtitle uh, color of a type of a color and a default value uh, of this uh, subtitle will also be calculated uh, based on this uh, selected modifier, okay? So now I'm going to just uh, copy those uh, two lines of code from the previous example. And uh, here, uh, if uh, our selected variable is true, in that case, I'm going to change here the color of our uh, subtitle text to be on surface. And in else case, it will just get that same color, but with a less opacity. Uh, now that we have defined uh, all those parameters for our uh, title and uh, subtitle, uh, now let's define the border. So border uh, width, its default value uh, will be a 1dp. Uh, next let's uh, specify here a border uh, color as well. So a border color, uh, let me just add here this parameter, so a color type, okay. And also we are going to calculate that uh, color for our border based on this uh, selected modifier. So if our uh, selected uh, value is true, then the color of our border uh, will be a primary. And in else case, it will be an on-surface color with an opacity of a 20%. Uh, next, uh, after that, I'm going to add here an uh, icon. So this will be an image vector in this case. And a default value will be icons.default. Uh, uh, check circle. So this is the existing icon uh, which uh, is available in this uh, icons object. Uh, next I'm going to define here icon uh, color as well. So let's define also here um, those if and else blocks. 
so we can calculate uh, the actual color of our icon so i'm going to add here of course a primary color and uh, on surface with a 20 percent opacity in else case and the final parameter uh, which i'm going to add here uh, will be on click so we can also uh, create here one lambda which will return a unit so of course uh, we can add here uh, some more parameters to this uh, composable function but uh, i think that uh, for this specific case uh, this will be enough and you can of course modify this uh, source code by yourself i'm going to leave that uh, source code uh, link uh, in my video description so don't worry about that and now let's continue creating our actual component here so here now i'm going to declare one column and inside that column uh, we're going to have uh, one row and uh, one text now inside that row i'm going to specify a uh, title text and the icon and that uh, other text below our uh, row will actually be our subtitle okay so now let's add here one column and the first thing uh, i'm going to specify here a modifier parameter so for the modifier i'm going to choose that the modifier uh, from the parameters of this uh, function and then i'm going to set here a border so the width of our border uh, will be a border width which we have declared already and then the second parameter is a color of our border so let's declare here border color and the third parameter here is a shape so we also need to define our border shape and let me just uh, move this uh, uh, down below on a separate line okay so i have forgot to declare this uh, border shape and now let me just add here uh, one more parameter so a border uh, shape of a type of a shape and a default value here uh, will be a rounded uh, corner shape where the size of those uh, corners uh, will be a 10 dp okay and now let's specify that uh, a border uh, shape here right there perfect so after our uh, border modifier i'm going to add here uh, one more modifier for now and that will be a clickable modifier so we can actually trigger our on click lambda whenever we select or click on our column so on uh, click lambda let's just uh, call that parameter uh, which we have declared here in our uh, composable function and now this uh, column uh, will have a row Let's also specify here uh, one modifier, so a modifier dot uh, padding. I'm going to apply here a padding value on the start to be a 12 dp in this case. And also I'm going to uh, specify here uh, one more parameter and that will be a vertical alignment. So let's specify here a uh, center vertically so we can center all those components uh, or elements inside our row. And this row will actually have only two elements, one text and one icon button. So let's declare first here a uh, one text composable uh, for the text i'm going to specify here the title uh, which is the parameter from our uh, composable function uh, i'm going to also add here one modifier and this uh, modifier will have a weight parameter so the weight of our text here uh, will be 8f and the element uh, below this text or our icon button will have a weight of a 2f which basically means that our text will take 80 uh, percent of the full uh, width of this row and that uh, icon button below that will take uh, only 20 percent of that uh, whole row width okay so here now we have declared a modifier in the title uh, next let's declare here a style for our text here so let's call a text a style so we can declare here a color for our uh, text let's specify here a title a color uh, the next one is a font a size so a title size uh, next one is a title a uh, or sorry uh, font uh, weight equal to title weight so we can customize our text here and the next time we to specify here a max lines of this text to be only one and uh, text overflow uh, will be ellipsize which means that uh, if our text uh, is longer than the space in our row uh, then we're going to add uh, three dots uh, at the end of that uh, text name or the title name okay and now below our text uh, i'm going to add uh, one icon button so this uh, icon button uh, will contain only one icon of course but first let's specify here uh, this uh, on click lambda so whenever we click on our icon button we want to trigger this uh, same on click lambda which we have declared right here and the reason is because uh, even if we click uh, on our whole uh, column or our whole selectable item composable function or our icon then i want to trigger this uh, on click now after that i also want to declare here a modifier for our icon so we can actually specify our weight uh, modifier 
So here I'm going to add uh, 2F. So basically our icon button will take uh, only 20% uh, of the full uh, width of this row, while our text will take 80% uh, of this uh, width of this row. Now uh, for our icon, let's specify here this um, uh, image vector. So I'm going to type just the icon. This is the parameter from our function. And the content description uh, can be maybe selectable item icon. This is just an example. And for the tint color, I'm going to specify here icon color from the parameters of this function. So now we have successfully completed our row. And here we have our title and our uh, icon button, which will represent that uh, checkmark icon. Now below this row, uh, I need to declare one more element, and that is a text, uh, which will represent our uh, subtitle. However, our uh, subtitle will actually be an optional uh, element in this uh, composable function, which means that we are going to have here one if block to decide whether to show this text or not. So if our subtitle is not null, so if we pass this uh, subtitle value to this composable function, only in that case we want to show this uh, text composable. So let's specify here a subtitle. Let's uh, also uh, call here a modifier. I'm going to apply here a padding horizontally uh, to be 12 dp and also a padding on the bottom uh, will be 12 dp as well. Now after this uh, modifier on this uh, text, I'm going to add here a style so we can stylize our uh, uh, subtitle here. So text uh, style, let's specify here the color, so subtitle color. Uh, next I'm going to specify here max lines to be 3. So our subtitle will basically have a maximum of 3 lines. And also let's specify here overflow, so text uh, overflow ellipsize. Now we have finally designed our selectable item and we can actually proceed to uh, create the logic to animate those items as well. Now before we continue let me just uh, open up our main activity so I can call this uh, selectable item composable function and that we can check that into our uh, Android emulator. So let's call here a selectable uh, item. Let's specify here this uh, selected um, a variable uh, from the top here. The title here can be maybe a lorem uh, ipsum. And in this uh, on click lambda, I'm going to just uh, change the value of our selected variable. So let's call here on a click. And uh, inside this lambda, I'm going to just uh, change the value of our uh, selected variable. So selected, equal, then uh, exclamation mark, selected. Which means that whenever we click our uh, selectable item, we're going to change this uh, value to be the opposite value of this selected. So this will basically just act as an on and off uh, switch. And now let's run this application in our emulator so we can check that out. And this is how our selectable item component uh, looks like so far. So we have our title and we have our checkmark icon. And of course, those two elements are inside a row and that row is inside a column and that column actually contains this uh, border. So now if I click on this uh, component, then those uh, colors uh, will change. However, uh, for now, there is uh, one more uh, issue here. So as you can see, whenever I uh, click on this um, component, then this uh, ripple effect will actually exceed the border of our selectable item, which means that uh, there is one more thing which I need to specify here in our selectable item. So let's go to column here and I'm going to call here uh, a clip modifier and then I'm going to pass a border shape. So with this, uh, we will be able to uh, limit our ripple effect to show up only within the borders of our component. So now, as you can see, this ripple effect will not exceed the borders of our component. So now we are able to successfully change the color of our uh, component. Now we are going to focus on uh, animating this uh, whole item. Uh, just one more thing before that. Uh, let me add here uh, one more selectable component uh, below this one. And I'm going to add here one uh, spacer so I can just um, so I can just divide those two components. Let's specify here a different value. So selected number two, there we go. And uh, I'm going to pass uh, here uh, some random text. Okay, and now let's run this application so we can actually see uh, how our component uh, will look like uh, with and without this uh, subtitle. Okay, so there we go. This is how it looks like uh, without and uh, with this uh, subtitle text. So there you go. Everything works uh, here perfectly fine. The only thing that is left here to actually specify and uh, add some animations. So let's go to our uh, selectable item. And uh, on top of our composable function, I'm going to define here uh, two variables. 
So the first one uh, will be a scale A. I'm going to use this remember composable function so I can remember this value. And I'm going to call here uh, animatable, so animatable. And let's create here uh, one more variable, a uh, named uh, scale B. So uh, one of those uh, variables uh, will be used to animate uh, our border or basically our whole uh, column and the other uh, will be used to animate only our icon. So let's now create here a launched effect block so we can actually trigger some code only when uh, one value changes. So whenever our parameter name the selected changes, uh, then we want to execute here uh, some code. So I'm going to say here if uh, selected is actually true. So only if this uh, value is actually true, only then I want to uh, animate uh, our items. So let's uh, here call uh, two launch uh, blocks. So we can trigger uh, two different coroutines. And basically I'm triggering here uh, two different coroutines. So I can uh, run all those animations at the same time. So in this first launch block, uh, I'm going to animate our first uh, scale A variable. So let's call animate to function and let's specify here uh, some values. So the target value here uh, will be 0.3 and the animation spec here uh, will be a twin animation where duration uh, will be only 50 milliseconds. Now after that, uh, I'm going to also add uh, one more animation so I can animate this uh, same uh, value one more time. And now the target value here uh, will be uh, one. So basically this uh, scale A uh, will be used to animate our uh, icon here and uh, we want to animate the size of this icon so basically we are shrinking this icon to 30 percent of its uh, full size and then we are uh, scaling that uh, same icon back to its original size of a 100 percent however in this uh, second animation i'm going to apply a different animation spec so i'm going to call here a spring animation and then i'm going to specify here uh, two different values the first one is the dumping ratio so let's call here a spring dot a dumping ratio a low bouncy so basically i don't want uh, this um, animation or our icon to bounce uh, that much so that's why i have chose the low bouncy but of course you can change that uh, to whatever uh, value you want and the second parameter here is a stiffness so I don't want to uh, have a uh, high stiffness for this uh, animation. Uh, that's why I'm going to specify here uh, spring dot uh, stiffness low. There you go. And the second animation here uh, will be applied to our second value scale B. So let's call here uh, scale B now. Uh, the only difference here is that uh, for this uh, first animation, I'm going to specify 0.9F and everything will stay the same. Okay, so this uh, second animation uh, will be used for our whole uh, column where uh, we are going to decrease the actual size of our whole uh, item to 90% and then we are going to get back its original size to 1F, which is basically 100%. And now let's just uh, call those uh, two uh, variables. So the first one uh, will be used right here, so uh, scale. So here I'm going to call a scale uh, a scale B, so dot the value, okay? So now on our icon, I'm going to add here uh, one more uh, modifier. So scale equal to scale A. So now I think that we can run this application and finally see how this uh, selectable item uh, will animate itself. So uh, their default value uh, will be false, of course. As you can see here, uh, we have specified those uh, two states to be a false. And that's why we are seeing those uh, same uh, colors. However, now let's uh, try and press this uh, first uh, selectable item. So there you go. So whenever we uh, deselect this item, uh, then you are not going to be able to see the animation only when you select that item. So as you can see now, we can see that animation and now we don't. Now we can, now we don't. Okay, so there you go. So as you can see, those uh, two animations uh, look uh, very nice. Of course, you can change those uh, values of this uh, spring animation by yourself, if you want to, of course. You can change those values, for example, uh, the values for, uh, for this uh, target value or uh, for those uh, dumping ratio parameters and the stiffness parameters. But in my case, I think that... Uh, those values which I have specified uh, work the best uh, for me. And there you go. So now you have learned uh, how you can easily animate uh, those items and create some uh, beautiful and uh, pleasing animations. Okay, so now you have seen how easy it is to create a custom UI component with a Jetpack Compose 
and also apply some uh, beautiful animations. The source code of this project uh, will be available down in the video description, so don't worry. Also, be sure to comment down below and uh, like this video if you find it uh, helpful, of course. And uh, see you in the next one.